My name is Louis, Louis Moreau, and I'm a developer relation engineer with Edge Impulse. In this session, I will speak about the Eon Tuner, which is our auto ML tool, but not only, uh, it also includes auto DSP. And the goal of this tool is to help you achieve the best model accuracy while respecting your device constraints. So when it comes to embedded machine learning, we should focus also on the device. So the device has constraints. And we also need to find the right balance between the signal processing and the ML, so the machine learning block, to make the most valuable of it. So it can actually be quite complex and can contain several parameters, uh, whether it's your input data, so the buffer size that you are going to classify or to infer. Then you have the pre-processing. You can use several techniques, such as uh, fast Fourier transforms to pre-process the raw data and then pass that along to the neural network. So it can actually learn and classify things easier. And then you have the machine learning or the machine learning architecture itself that can contain several, several parameters. So we have seen in the previous videos how to collect some data. We're not going to go through that again. Once you've collected enough data, you usually go to the create impulse tab. This is the place where you design your machine learning model. And from there, you can start defining uh, some of the parameters, whether uh, it's the input size, um, so the window size, uh, it's actually the length of the sample that you are going to classify when it comes to time series data. It can also be the image size for images projects. Then uh, you can choose a pre-processing block if you want. This usually uh, helps the neural network to learn easily. When it comes to the digital signal processing parts, pre-processing like raw data to extract meaningful features, you can uh, choose from several blocks that are already available, uh, whether it's uh, audio MFCC, audio MFE, a spectrogram, you can just use raw data or you can also for images project, uh, select for example, the depth of the colors, whether it's grayscale or, or RGB. Then about the neural network, again, you have several options. You can use transfer learning techniques. You can also use default classifier. In those, you have like different architectures that you can choose. Let me just go back quickly on the pre-processing. Uh, here it's the MFE block. So you have several options and those options. So those parameters can have a huge impact on the device's constraints. Here, for example, if you change the frame stride, uh, if you move uh, from 0.01 to 0.02, you can see like you can go from the, the processing time to so the, the, the time needed to pre-process the data. Uh, it goes from uh, 332 milliseconds uh, with a max of 25 kilobytes uh, to something way smaller, so 100. Uh, 71 millisecond and a max peak RAM of 17 kilobytes. So this is more powerful, but maybe the features are less understandable by the neural network. Then when it comes to the neural network uh, architecture here on this screen, you can see a mobile nets uh, transfer learning uh, technique, but you still have a couple of parameters that you can adjust, uh, whether it's the, the number of training cycles or the number of epochs and the learning rates. On other kind of projects, you might want to write your own neural network architecture. You can uh, use uh, like standard 1D convolutional, like, uh, and those have different layers uh, in the architecture, so in the deep learning network. Or uh, again, you can choose another, like that's a, another template, uh, which has a, a 2D convolutional neural networks. Those architectures can be really different and it really takes some time um, to feel uh, what would be the best neural network architecture. So the main problem is that uh, the model architecture can contain uh, many hyperparameters. Just for recap, we've seen the windowing, so the window size or the input size uh, that you want to, to use, uh, the DSP, so the number of fast Fourier transform filters or the fast Fourier transform length. And this is only on one specific digital signal processing method. 
And then on the Keras part, so the neural network part, uh, you can choose in between different architectures and uh, you can have uh, different layers as well. So picking the right value requires a lot of experience and trial error. And for some parameters, I don't even know how they work or what's the impact it will have on my, on my model and on my model performances. So even if it will fit on my device. So let's back to, let's go back to what we know. Uh, what we know is which target, so usually, uh, which target do we want to run the, the neural network or the, the model on? So usually we know the desired latency. So how long uh, uh, do I need my model or to take on my function, like my whole block function to take before giving me uh, a result? Um, if I know the target device, I know usually the RAM and the ROM, uh, the flash footprint or at least uh, what, what is available. And then we've seen that there are so many different options. So here uh, we can have four options for the window size or the window increase. We can have four options for the fast Fourier transform features and fast Fourier transform length. Uh, my neural network architecture can be based on convolutional 1D or convolutional 2D. It can have several layers and several conv convolutional features. So those make like, like thousands of possible variants of, of my model. So this is why we released Eon Tutor more than a year ago. And the goal was to design the optimal machine learning solution within the constraints of your device. So what we want to do is to make the most of limited and heterogeneous compute, uh, find the perfect balance between feature extraction and model architecture. We want to provide recommendation based on real performance metrics, and it has been designed and built for uh, constrained devices. So it's really tiny devices that has almost no uh, uh, RAM uh, and ROM availability. Also, it works on high-end uh, high -end, like, and complex projects, uh, such as uh, like uh, object detect complex object detections. And we also provide uh, suggestions on optimal hardware target for, uh, for your use case. So this is the view that you obtain when you want to create an Eon Tuner job. Uh, you can find the Eon Tuner tab on the left menu. When you click on start, uh, uh, like uh, configure the targets, uh, you will only need to choose uh, three options. Uh, first is the data set category. So you can choose between four options. I, I think I will see that in the next, uh, next slide. Then you can select the target device uh, from all the list of uh, the official device or official board that we, that we support. And then you can define your uh, max inference time. So in the data set category, um, here it recognized that my, in my data acquisition uh, tab, I had audio uh, or uh, yeah, audio, audio files. And so it will uh, give me three options here. Uh, so whether it's a keyword spotting model, it's audible uh, events, or it's continuous audio, uh, such as like industrial machinery noise uh, that, that you want to, that you want to detect. Then, uh, you can click on, uh, start the Eon tuner. Uh, this will take up to uh, 30 to maybe an hour. Uh, so it can, uh, launch several different jobs in parallel and then give you the best, uh, the best model. Uh, based on your uh, constraints. So you have um, on the one side, uh, the latency, you have the RAM, you have the, the ROM, uh, you have the confusion metrics and you have the inputs here. Uh, so the window size, uh, the window increase, uh, which parameter for the digital signal processing is chosen. Uh, and then uh, you have the uh, learning block parameters uh, and you can compare those in uh, like in one view. Uh, you have up to, I don't, I can't remember how many different options that, that you have. And um, if I zoom on the on the filters, so you can uh, filter by the validation set or the test set. Uh, you can sort. Uh, for example, the accuracy might be not the the thing that you want to focus on, but rather the latency or you want to to keep some RAM or flash size on your device because you need your project uh, to, well, you need to include that in a project that already consume or already have some, some files and, and some, and some compute uh, need, needs. 
you can filter on the F1 score or the precision or the recall. So those are the options that, that you can use. And then uh, you can just click on select and automatically it will feed uh, in the impulse design uh, all those parameters according to what you selected. So this is great. You've seen it's super simple. Uh, within three clicks, you can train on your, met on your network. You just need to focus on your data. However, uh, it's sometimes uh, too easy. So for different use cases, uh, we noticed that uh, the Ion Tuner was not enough and we need to constrain the search space and, and also support some, some custom blocks uh, that, that our customers and, and users uh, provide. Uh, they have techniques that, uh, that they've been working on internally and they want to upload that to the studio and use those. And those are things that we do not officially support. But if we want to... Uh, we want our users to be able to use them uh, within the Eon Tuner. So back in uh, September 2022, we released something new, which is called the Eon Tuner Search Space. And the uh, Eon Tuner Search Space, uh, well, let me give you um, an example, for example, why you would need uh, to, to constrain the search space. Uh, so for example, uh, you already purchased some, uh, some cameras and those only work uh, with grayscale uh, depth, uh, color depth. Um, so, for example, in that case, it's completely useless to, to search for uh, RGB models so to make sure they are, they are okay. You want to only concentrate on one uh, specific features uh, of your digital signal processing graph. Um, another option could be like uh, you have engineers in your company that have spent hours and, or weeks working on a dedicated signal processing technique. And uh, it has been proven to work. So you want to use this one, and but you still want to to enlarge the scope of uh, of the neural network architecture. You're not sure about it, and you want to use that. And another example could be like uh, you have internally like uh, some great data scientists that uh, that just have the feeling that the particular neural network architecture will work best because. Um, They've been working on, uh, on a paper around around this kind of architecture, and you don't know about the digital signal processing. Maybe uh, having a different technique uh, would help. So you want to you would just want to search for that. Here is one example that uh, that actually happened to me. Um, I wanted to check how I could reduce. Uh, the size of the, because uh, by default, uh, when we were doing image classification, we needed to use transfer learning using Edge Impulse Studio. And uh, these uh, transfer learning models, even if uh, I was choose, uh, I chose the, the smallest one, so the MobileNet V1 uh, using a 0.1 alpha. And um, so that's the, the bare minimum that, that I could use. Uh, even for that, the inference time was still 338 milliseconds. And the RAM uh, usage, or well, the peak RAM usage was 55.3 kilobytes of RAM. And the flash size was 106.6 uh, kilobytes. So uh, I wanted to reduce that and I wanted to test the technique. So if I was using some uh, custom uh, image processing before passing that the, to the neural network, um, I wanted to see if I could reduce uh, the the, the, the on-device performances while uh, keeping a good accuracy. Um, this was kind of hard to do at the time because the Eon Tuner was, was not there. Um, well, I managed to, to write a blog post around it. Uh, feel free to, to have a look. But this is to say, like, uh, if I had the Eon Tuner search space at the time, uh, things would have been way easier. So how it works, the Eon Tuner, um, so it used templates. Uh, those can be a bit hard to understand at the, at, at the beginning, but basically uh, a blank template looks like the, the following. So you have input blocks, you have DSP blocks, and you have learning blocks. Those are the three things that, uh, that are contained in your machine learning pipelines. Um, so to understand the core concepts, uh, what I recommend usually is to load uh, templates. So we have uh, ready to ready to use templates and modify them uh, uh, as you want. Um, yeah, we provide templates for different categories uh, as well. Uh, if you already trained an impulse, you can just load that and then open up different fields. 
So the search parameters in the block, uh, elements inside an array are considered as parameters. Uh, this means you can stack several combinations of input blocks, DSP blocks and learn blocks. Um, so in your template, each block can contain several elements, such as like a, the main array can be like a, a combination of input DSP and learn block, and then you can stock those. And you can also inside an input block, for example, uh, put different uh, image size that you want to test. So 96 by 96, uh, 128 by 128. So it will test both combinations. Um, once you've played with it uh, a couple of times, uh, it's super powerful and it's, uh, it's great. So I really recommend to, to have a look at, the, uh, at it. Um, unfortunately, as uh, Ion Tuner jobs are pretty long to, to train, uh, I won't do a live demo on this, um, but this is all you need to know. Feel free to create an account on Agible Studio if you haven't done so. Uh, you can also use the Evaluate uh, Getting Started Wizard to build your model in five minutes. And you can find the Eon Tuner documentation on docs.agible.com slash docs slash Agible Studio slash Edge Impulse uh, uh, slash Eon Tuner. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly on the forum, uh, forum.agible.com. And we'd love to see what you build. So make sure uh, to share, whether it's on social media or even on the forum, what you've built uh, with the Eon Tuner uh, O2ML tool. Thanks a lot. That was Louis, Louis Moreau from Edgibles. Have a great day.